Meine Damen und Herren, herzlich willkommen in Wolfsburg. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wolfsburg. Schön, wir uns im alten Jahr, ich will mal sagen, It's so nice that we managed to meet again at the end of the year können. once again. Wir wollten das nicht bei Lebkuchen und Glühwein machen. We didn't want to invite you to have a piece of Lebkuchen and Glühwein, which is hot wine, but as is normally the case, we are a bit more business oriented here in Wolfsburg. So we did not only want to cast a glance at the fiscal year, but we also wanted to zoom in on the top topics which are going to keep us busy in the next months and years to come. And this is why we've invited you to come here. Dr. Herbert Dies is with us, the chairman of the board of Volkswagen Brandt, Dr. Arno Antlitz, our CFO, and Jürgen Stockmann are with us. Mr. Stockmann is in charge of sales and marketing. All the three gentlemen are going to inform you about the current state of play. They are going to present short speeches to you and afterwards, of course, we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Dr. Dies will start off, Dr. Antlitz follows, and then Mr. Strachmann will take over. Dr. Dies, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Bestenbostel. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wolfsburg in our brand house. The members of the board and are particularly happy to be able to welcome you. Welcome to Volkswagen. Approximately exactly one year ago in this very space, we informed you about our strategy Transform 2025 Plus. And today, and I think it's more than appropriate to do so after one year, we would like to draw an interim balance. The cornerstone of our strategy are known to you. Up until 2025, we are going to transform the brand in three steps. In the first period, up until 2020, we are going to strengthen our core business and increase our competition. Thus, we position the brand the world over as a top-of-volume brand. We start off with a comprehensive SUV campaign, and we are going to set up turnaround programs for the regions. An increase in productivity and a cost-cutting measure made it possible for us to improve our returns. At the same time, we are preparing our electrical campaign. From 2020 onwards, with a completely new car architecture, and in the beginning, five purely electrical car models, we want to become the market leader as quickly as possible in the field of e-mobility. Starting off with 2025, we will then also promote autonomous driving. It is our goal to make Volkswagen the volume manufacturer at the top of the rank and we also want to play a leading role in the new world of car manufacturing. And this is why we've really aligned our first milestone of our strategy to the year 2020 because then we've got to adhere to new CO2 fleet regulations within the EU, which is a tremendous challenge for the entire car industry. On this slide, you see the current CO2 fleet values of different manufacturers and the gap between now and 2020. You can see for yourselves that almost all the manufacturers have to reduce their values by 20 grams per kilometer and more. In some cases, it's even 30 grams per kilometer. This is an all-time high. The situation in China is comparable, and in the US, the same trend is going to set off from 2023 onwards. With conventional vehicles, this cannot be achieved. A five-seater sedan with a petrol engine in the best of all cases can be brought down to 95 grams max. A compact SUV can maybe be brought down to 120 to 140 grams. And even if you look at the Polo with 85 grams, we've reached our limits. The further optimization of co combustion engine in three grams ever more expensive. Each gram at the mild hybrid costs 100 euros per vehicle. For the hybrid, it's even more than 150 euros. We have tapped all the economical potential to reduce CO2. Alternative fuels or combustion engines slowly but surely 
appear as an alternative on the horizon and the regulations after 2020 become ever stricter. The EU intends to introduce new ambitious goals for 2025, the same also for China and the US, which means we need the electric car in order to reach the fleet values. All the manufacturers from 2020 onwards will try to enter the market with electric vehicles. This is why we assume that we'll be there will be many more models in the market and there will be ever harsher competition. If you then manage to sell appealing electrical vehicles with positive margins, you will end up being in a tremendous competitive advantage. And that is exactly our goal. That is what our strategy is aiming at in the first period. So what is the current state of play concerning the implementation of Transform 2025 Plus? You all know Volkswagen started off in a very difficult situation, in a situation of dire straits in 2015. The world over, we were more successful in some regions than we were in others, and we lost some of our market strength. We had no successful concept for North and South America. Our fixed costs were too high and by way of comparison, our productivity was far too low. Our organizational structures were too hierarchical and there was too much red tape. And at the end of the day, our returns were far too low in order to make the necessary investments for the future. With the diesel gate, of course, the situation has ag aggravated even further. Over the past 12 months, we have started to implement our new strategy, and it is definitely true to say that the strategic new orientation of Volkswagen has become a success. We've made major headway. We have started off with the biggest model campaign in the history of Volkswagen ever. We have managed to increase the profitability of the brand and thus we've managed to create the necessary preconditions in order to be able to invest into the brand for the future. Within the framework of our international model campaign, especially in the fields of SUVs, we've strengthened our presence and the great demand shows that the new models are very appealing. The T1 has now been made available the world over, and in the course of this year, we have managed to increase deliveries exceeding 650,000. Apart from Wolfsburg, we also have manufacturing sites for the T1 in China, North America, Russia, India, and Malaysia. And with the T1 All Space, we have made a long version available as well. The RT1 is our no new top sedan. It emphasizes once more our premium appeal in the brand, and this is why we were really happy that we received the Goldenes Renkrad 2017, the golden steering wheel. A new and modern facelift was also given to the new T-Rock. Our most recent SUV makes the brand much younger and gives it a much stronger emotional appeal. The first reactions in the market have been very positive, and this is why we're already today thinking about increasing our production volume. All in all, in the course of this year, 10 new models have been launched in the market, and five of them are completely new without having any predecessors. The new model helped us increase sales and profit. In the course of last year, we have managed to increase our worldwide sales figures by 3% compared to the previous year. Deliveries increase month by month. This is a very dynamic development. September and October were the best months of all times. We've reached an all-time high, and we are also very positive about the final results of November. All in all, at the end of this year, we will have sold more than 6 million vehicles, and this will probably once again constitute an all-time high in sales. Our growth is triggered by positive developments in the region. In China, as always, we are very well positioned, but we always manage to grow in other regions of the market, especially in North and South America. The turnaround programs really pay off. We have managed to reposition the brand in the region, and as a consequence of regionalization, we have delegated a lot more responsibility to the regions, and the results are quite considerable. In the US, we have managed to set up the preconditions in order to make Volkswagen become a relevant volume supplier. With the new Atlas, we have managed to enter EU 
core segment within which we have not been represented so far. Against the current market trend, the brand continues to grow and we will be able to further increase our market share before the end of the year. In Brazil, too, the turnaround program has become a success. In Brazil, we have carried out a profound restructuring measure and at the same time we are investing into new attractive products with the Polo and the Virtus, which is a sedan and polo sites which was particularly developed for the South American market, we set new standards in the Brazilian volume segment. In the median run in Brazil, we intend to regain the market leadership with our Volkswagen brand. Up until 2020, in all the big regions of the world, we want Volkswagen to become top of volume. Each and every new model will support our claim that we are in the wheel lead in the field of quality and technology in the volume segment. We also make headway in the field of costs and productivity. Our fixed costs remain stable despite our model campaign. Additional costs deriving from increase in wages and salaries were compensated by cost reduction measures. With regards to the pact for the future, we have managed to make considerable headway, but still we have a long way to go. This is also reflected on in the development of our productivity. Especially the German engine and gearbox plants have become much more productive. Here the pact of the future helped us to achieve our objectives and even exceed them. The car production plants are in a difficult, more difficult situation, but also the manufacturing costs for a Golf from Volkswagen and Zwickau were improved considerably. And across the board, it is true to say that we need to continue to work hard on improving our productivity and we need to implement the pact for the future consistently. Dr. Anglitz will talk about this later on. Ladies and gentlemen, the strategic realignment is starting to bear fruit. This is shown by the key figures. In the first three quarters, operating profit was more than doubled to 2.5 billion euros. The operating return on sales currently stands at 4.3%. In this, of course, we're benefiting by a very beneficial environment. The economic situation all over the world is booming. Most of the car markets are growing. In the past few months, this was of help to us. There is no guarantee that this is going to be here on a permanent basis. In the long term view, we will be able to revert a trend that was pointing downwards since 2011. In 2017, for the first time, we will have a clearly improved result. With a view to this development, we have adapted our targets for the total year of 2017. We're now calculating an operating return on sales in the target corridor between 2.5 and 3.5 percent. Rather, it will be moderately beyond this target corridor. So step by step, we are improving our room for financial maneuver. This is a joint achievement of the entire Volkswagen team. Our 200,000 staff members in the past 12 months have done a good, have done a very good job, and I would like to say thank you also on behalf of my colleagues on the board of management. A cordial thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the first step has been made, but we know that this is just the beginning. Um, generally speaking, we have uh, done the first five kilometers of a marathon. So we are now warm and can move forward. In particular with profitability, we can't stay happy with what we've achieved. Many competitors are still far ahead of us. So what have we set ourselves by way of a target for the second year of Transform 2025 plus? Well, we will move forward the strategic realignment of the Volkswagen brand, uh, and among other things, we will continue to accelerate our worldwide model campaign. Our product pipeline is filled to the brim. In total, we have more than 50 car projects in development, among the many SUVs. Up until 2020, every year we will have more than 10 new models coming to the market. 
Shortly, the clearly edgier Jetta and the new Touareg will be started. In 2018, those will be followed by important models like the new T-Cross and the facelifted Passat. Uh, Arteon next year will be on the markets in China and in the United States. In China, four new SUVs will be starting. And also, we expand our electric fleet quite considerably. Up until 2020, we'll have more than 10 new energy vehicles in our offer. SUVs? SUVs are the growth engine for growth and profitability. Um, to pinpoint it, one could say we're earning the money with the SUVs that we require for the turnaround towards e-mobility. In the coming years, we will therefore continue with our SUV campaign. Up until 2020, we'll have about 20 SUVs in our portfolio, and the share of sales of SUVs will have been increased to up to 40%. Simultaneously, we continue to work on our cost situation. The central project up until 2020 is the preparation of our electric campaign. Volkswagen has been synonymous with making available innovation and uh, uh, for broad user groups available and make it affordable. This was true for the Beetle and the Golf, and this will be true for the new generation of fully connected electric cars. Or to put it differently, the Golf Golf of the electric era still has to be a true Volkswagen. The technological backbone for our e-drive or e-campaign is the modular electric drive system or toolkit. It is a uh, well-performing electric architecture worldwide and it opens up the potential for electric cars for the first time to the full. Our electric cars offer high ranges and clearly more space in the interior. They come along with a truly new design, they're fully connected and thus they can be updated at any point of time. Now fully connected for us means just means much more than just offering a simple internet connection. With the MEB, the modular electric system, we restart the complete new electronic system of the car and we build the car around three central computer units. Today, each and every function is carried out by individual control units with individual softwares, which makes uh, for rather difficult updates. Sometimes it's even impossible to update them. With the MEB, we're changing this. In the future, all of the functions will be controlled by the central electronic architecture, e to the power of three, and by the operating system, Volkswagen.OS. The updates and upgrades that are possible then mean that, mean that the car will always be at the latest status and will be enriched by new functions. With the modular electronic system, the MEB, when it comes to digitization, we are heading for a true quantum leap. The electronics architecture e to the power of three will be a new yardstick when it comes to the control of cars in the volume segment. Ladies and gentlemen, at the beginning I said just how important it will be to have positive returns with our electric cars. Um, this graph shows you that with the MEB, we won't just reach our CO2 targets, we will also secure profit targets. With the MEB, we have a strong toolkit and attractive cars in important market segments. Apart from the uh, substantial, from the great, apart from the great product substance, it also offers superior cost positions. Through good economies of scale and a cost-optimized platform, we will make our electric cars clearly more profitable than the competition. With a mix from profitable electric cars and highly profitable SUVs, we will be able to steer Volkswagen successfully through the critical year 2020. As regards the buzzword of economies of scale, from 2020 onwards, the first ID models on MEB basis will be brought to the market. In the first year alone, we want to sell about 100,000 MEB cars. In 2025, the Volkswagen brand will sell a worldwide 1 million MEB cars. If you take together all the group brands, then we are talking about approximately 1.5 million cars. Major share of this 
will be in China. This month, we signed the contracts with our Chinese joint ventures. The outlook says that about two-thirds of all MEB cars will be on Chinese roads. Ladies and gentlemen, the MEB has a superior significance to the future of Volkswagen. This is mirrored by our current capital expenditure planning. In the next five years, the brand will invest about 6 billion euros into electromobility. One third will go to development costs and changeover of the German sites. And our components, our engines and gearboxes, plants, inserts, Gitter, Braunschweig and Kassel will be turned to key suppliers of electro components. Largest capital expenditure goes to Zwickau for about 1 billion euros. We change over the plan to become a true e-mobility e-car uh, site. From 2019 onwards, we'll have six MEB models that will uh, leave the lines different, of, uh, different models of the group brands and, among others, the idea of Volkswagen. The focusing on one site may offers major advantages. Thus, we focus our electric competences and can be even more efficient in the production. Zwickau in Saxony will be turned into the largest European e-mobility competence center. Ladies and gentlemen, I take it that with a fully connected electric car in the future, only very few standards will be uh, permeating. And uh, large volumes will be, even more so than in the past, will be the prerequisite for economic success. MEB will be one of those global standards. We will roll it out over our group brands in and the regions and thus create major economies of scale. Ladies and gentlemen, the Volkswagen brand has picked up speed and is preparing for the tasks ahead of us. It is important for us to co-shape the change of individual mobility and be among the leaders in this position. With a view to 2020, we need to shoulder the immediate burdens of our industry as best as possible. The new fleet targets are a turning point for the automotive industry. We need to be well prepared with a strategy 2025 plus and the pact for the future. We have started to have a good position for our brand. Thus, we have improved the starting position of Volkswagen quite clearly and uh, the the, the, that we can show results that can be seen from this financial year. I also want to make clear that with the long-term catching up process, we have just started with it. Also, we have to see that in a situation of change, there are many um, changing situations. It's, new changes in regulations, new competitors, and new players when it comes to autonomous driving. With all the optimism uh, when it comes to the future of cars, we think that in this phase we will have new challenges for the teams and for our company. The world of cars is no longer as planable as it has been. We have to make Volkswagen fit for this world. We are faced with a true marathon. We have started and we are quite well on our way on the first stretch. Now we know the route, we are continuously working on our fitness and we are very determined um, to come across the finish line with a very good result in time. Thank you very much for your attention. Antlitz. Mr. Antlitz, please. So, good. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the right track. The financial competitiveness of the Volkswagen brand can be strengthened. This is reflected also in the sales figures for the third quarter. In the first nine months, we have a total turnover of 59 billion euros. And before special effects, we came up with an operating result of 2.5 billion in total. The operating margin after nine months amounts to 4.9 percent. But in the third quarter, there were major setbacks and we had to set up accruals for the diesel gate 
consequence amounting to 2.6 billion euros. Buying back or retrofitting the vehicles with a two-liter diesel engine in North America was a major effort. It was a rather painstaking and technically sophisticated process. And for that, we've set an, an, an accrual, which we call it accrual for special effects. Therefore, we had to adjust our figures. We only show those activities in our accounts which are directly related with the performance of the brand. In order to offset this effect, more than 8 percent to 59 million billion were increased. Positive volume developments and product mixes have turned out to be rather successful and we managed to catch up in many other markets and we really benefited from it. Our sales figures in Western Europe were stabilized and in Russia we increased our sales figures considerably. In North and South America we are exceeding the figures of last year and our new products have really strengthened our total turnover. The Arteon, as well as the Atlas and the Tiguan in North America, have been very successful model launches. And so far in the course of the year, we have really benefited from the Tiguan being available in all the markets the world over. Please do not forget that our joint ventures in China are not taken into account in our sales and turnover figures, because these are joint ventures. And this is what we consolidate at equity only. Positive volumes and margin effects are also the main drivers for the strong increase in our operating result. Furthermore, lower volume assistance measures and in particular better prices in the regions are attributable to that. All these effects amounted to 1.2 billion in total. Currency effects had an effect, a positive effect amounting to 300 million. In the entire year 2017, commodity prices have increased considerably, but we managed to keep our product costs down and even reduce them by 300 million euros. And fixed costs in the first nine months of the year remain stable. Despite increasing turnover figures and our product campaign, and despite many investments in our new electro stru vehicle structure. One of effects compared to the previous year amounted to half a million negatively. All in all, before special effects, compared to the previous year, we managed to more than double the operating profit. After special effects, the operating profit of the Volkswagen brand was slightly negative. Sorry, the operating results. Our R&D costs with 2.5 billion after nine months reached a level of 4.2 percent. With this improved quota, certain efficiency improvements in technical developments contribute to this development. We bank on modern virtual technologies for testing. Also, CapEx with 2.1 billion are perfectly on track. As you can see, we put a very strong focus on cost reductions and reasonable investments. And this will continue to be the case in the future because it will lead to a much better cash flow for the brand. We are facing tremendous challenges in the entire sector. Just think of the ever strict emissions values that we have to adhere to the world over. Just think of the setup of our electoral structure and the transformation of our brand because we want to become a leading e-mobility supplier. For that reason, with our operating result, we have got to generate as much money as possible in order to make the necessary investments for the future. At the latest, up until 2020, we want to reach an operating cost flow of more than 1 billion euros. Ladies and gentlemen, the development over the recent month has shown that the three core levers for improving our profitability of Volkswagen has turned out to have turned out to be successful. Our product can gain has gained more swing. With the Atlas and the Tiguan long space in the North American market, we have launched two new models and that is why we've entered the SUV segment with two strong models and with the 
T-Rock, another appealing model will be launched in Europe with the introduction of Arteon and the new Polo. We bank on the rollout of our MQB system. The Pact for the Future helps us bring down fixed costs and first positive results have already been achieved as a consequence of increased productivity in German plants. Together with the ideas in the efficiency program, which was started in 2014, 1.9 billion were spent on additional measures. Furthermore, more than 8,000 of our employees signed a contract for early retirement. On to the thirst lever, on to the regions. In the most important regions of the world, North and South America, that is, but also in Russia, we have managed to gain more swing and we are back on the growth track. We have managed to improve our profitability in Russia and North America and with the help of exports to the Chinese market. It is to be expected that these de positive developments in the regions will continue. In South America with the Polo, we've got the first vehicle in the market based on the MQB. The Virtus was very well received by the experts in the region. The result is characterized by a low capacity utilization and a new market launch, but we think that in the course of 2018, these vehicles will help us gain more ground. In all the regions, at the latest, in 2020, we want to reach our targets. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are on the right track. For 2017, we expect a total return of more than 3.5%. Up until 2020, more positive effects will derive from the Pact for the Future, our model campaign, and the developments in the region. On the other hand, in the next few years to come, in the entire car industry, we will have to face tremendous challenges. And they will really impose a strong burden on us, financially speaking. That holds true in particular for the ever stricter emissions regulations, also the restructuring of our value-added chain towards e-mobility will require major investments. In the focus years 2020 and afterwards, we try to make more and more use of our MEB structure, and this of course also refers to the structuring of our plants in Zwickau, because here we want to go become fully electrical. But despite all the challenges ahead of us for 2020, we expect an operative return ranging between 4 to 5 percent. And it cannot be excluded that on the way towards 2020, we will already reach such a return ratio. For 2025, we will continue to stick to our 6 percent goal. Ladies and gentlemen, the figures of the first nine months of this year prove that we are on the right avenue. We managed to increase the competitiveness of the Volkswagen brand even more, and we will continue to embark on this path in the next few years to come. And now I'd like to pass the floor to Jürgen Stackmann. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, a warm welcome. I would like to go a bit deeper down into the sales results all around the globe and connect this to a, an outlook to the next year. Then I would ta take a look at two things that will be rather demanding in sales in the next year. So behind me you see the development of the result uh, for the year 2017 and it shows quite clearly that the Volkswagen brand is in a positive basic dynamism. After a weak start, we moved up quarter by quarter. In October, we had the most successful October ever with 550,900 deliveries year on year, a plus of 7.7%. Main drivers in October were Brazil with above 70% plus year on year. Russia, as was said, 14%, uh, 40.6% to United. 
United States with just under 12%, and China, of course, as the volume heart of our brand with just under 10%, 9.2, major drivers of the good result. Dr. Dees has already mentioned it for November this year. We're expecting a further record result. We can be stating this this evening. Now the month is not over yet, which is why I don't have any final numbers for you, but we dare to say today that the growth dynamism that you see from October, that we'll be able to keep that up. Positive momentum comes from many regions, and this is why we are optimistic when we look at the year-end result. As an outlook for the year 2018, we are expecting a bit of a lower growth rate, in particular in the first quarter of next year, because of the temporary cooling off period in China, which is to be expected, which we've seen at the beginning of this year. Again, in China, at the end of the year, the tax for engines under 1.6 liters will be changing. It uh, runs out over two years. It's coming in two stages, and it's running out at the end of the year. There will be a, an effect that people move uh, sales ahead in the fourth quarter of this year, uh, the amount we'll see. But with a view to the, next, uh, to the first quarter next year, we have to be careful. Still, I think, generally speaking, we will be optimistic when we look at the year 2018. Now, behind me, you see the sales results for the big regions for the first nine months. You see here, uh, in some, we have sold more than 5 million cars of the Volkswagen brand to customers, plus of 3.2%. We're particularly pleased about the fact that we have a rather harmonious situation around the globe. We have more or less green results everywhere in North America. That's Canada, United States, and Mexico are growing quite well year on year, plus 4%. Uh, within the region, United States plus 9.4 percent for the first nine months, and Canada uh, shows 12.7 percent. Even Mexico is reduced on the basis of exchange rates. Mexican peso was devalued quite strongly uh, with a view to the euro and the dollar, and unfortunately in Mexico there were quite a number of natural disasters, unfortunately, which uh, weren't really susceptible to people buying cars. The highlight is South America. The entire region is recovering in economic terms. Uh, the entire demand situation is moving up. It's quite nice to see when you go to South America now how the mood is moving into a positive direction now. For us, we don't just have the one market that's moving the stage forward as Brazil, but Argentina is also working, is moving up greatly, 38.3% uh, uh, in total for, uh, compared to 2016. In small markets, the LAM, LAM countries are gaining market share are in the plus and we are looking forward to strong positive uh, impulses with new products. You see Europe, Europe without Germany, I deliberately uh, put it up here because in Germany there is a special effect. We are growing fortunately by 2.3 percent. Major influence factor is the new Tiguan who is uh, moving things forward quite considerably in Europe. The growth alone from this model is 54 percent compared to in previous years. You uh, see the dynamism quite clearly from in the SUVs in Germany. Because of the diesel issue, we have a special effect here. Here, the image issue is hitting us quite strongly. We are particularly pleased about the fact that in the last four months, we have seen a turnaround. Order entries are clearly above previous year, which is rather good. Germans like to order their own uh, cars um, from the plant and don't order it from stock. Uh, as of end of November, for the first time, we'll have a positive uh, delivery plus year on year, and we continue to have good and strong order entry. So Germany is moving in a positive direction, and we are very pleased that we can actually now finally get things moving. One of the major impulses is the environmental premium that we get, and we haven't talked a lot about it. Therefore, I would like to give you a bit of an information on it. Uh, up until now, we were able to move 50,000 old diesel cars out of uh, circulation, which is quite a huge number. 
if you think about it, of the 50,000 cars, 35,000 customers bought new cars, 15,000 customers bought new EU6 or almost new uh, cars, presentation cars from dealerships mostly, and the results within the sales figures are, con are quite surprising. 9% of the cars or of the car buyers uh, wanted to go for alternative cars, 5.1 electric cars, e-golf mainly, that, uh, which means that the normal demand is gone up by f is gone up five times almost, which we wouldn't have dared to go for as a forecast. We wouldn't have expected this with owners of old cars, but it shows that attractive cars with good conditions can cause major change in the demand situation. 2.4 percent were plug-in hybrids, PHEVs of the Golf, that's the GTR, GTE Golf and Passat, and 1.1 percent CNG cars. So here we see a major shift in demand. I think that's rather promising also when you think about the program idea to do a lot for the environment by a change over from old to new and in new uh, moving towards sustainable mobility. Um, China stays the growth driver number one in the absolute volume growing by 3.9 percent in total and it shows quite clearly that uh, this is a dynamism and that as a brand we have a specific basic strength in the Chinese market. Now let's talk about the overall market development. Dr. Dies has already referred to it. The overall markets this year do help us all around the world and we have uh, shown you the two figures as to how the overall market is moving and how the Volkswagen brand is faring. So overall markets worldwide, you see it in the bottom right hand corner, have moved up by 3.1 percent year on year. And if you take a look at the absolute numbers this year, more than 83 million cars will be sold all over the world. So the demand for individual mobility is still there. And the dream of people to have one's own car, to move around individually, this idea is still prevalent all around the globe. And this year, we think we'll have positive signs or positive figures, how strong that remains to be seen. North America overall market in North America went down by 1%. Uh, contrary to the trend, we have developed very positively in the United States and in Mexico, and we are gaining market share uh, logically in this region. The same is true for South America. Here, our market position was enhanced. Strongly market helped us, but as a brand, we move beyond this rather strongly. In Asia Pacific, which you can see on the other side, the overall market grew by 4.8 percent. We are slightly below this growth still, but we hope that we'll be able to close that gap by the end of the year. The dy dynamic situation of the brand is very high in China, one has to say that. This brings us to the next chart, and I'll move to a topic which is probably no longer in our focus, but it's a very important one in operative terms for us. This is about diesel um, flashing. How far have we gone with retrofitting? Well, we got 100% of the releases for the diesel flashes for introducing the new software in the cars. We got this approval by the authorities, and we're well on our way to conclude this process, to finish it. In Germany, our home market, 91% of all the cars involved have already been equipped with the new software. So uh, statistics tell us that we are quite close to the maximum. You'll never be able to go for 100% because cars have been deregistered or are no longer active on the roads. In Europe, the uh, share is at 73%, and we have to say we're almost at our level of commitment of 75%. And it's here where I would like to explicitly say thank you to our partners in the dealerships and the service people who have done a tremendous amount of work over the last two years. Now, one uh, chart on regionalization. I'm going to be brief because Dr. Dies has given you the information. We have shown you the sites of some of the products here, which will help us forward in the next few years. You see the effects that we, the positive effects that we get this year do not necessarily coincide with new products. In South America, for example, the positive sales effect has been created without new products. The new Polar has just come 
coming to the, has just come to the market very well received. The VAT is, is, is only coming to the market. So for next year, in South America specifically, we think we'll have a lot of positive impulse. In North America, with the Tiguan and the new Atlas, we have introduced two new products that are really uh, that are talking to the heart of the American markets. Americans want SUVs. Almost 65% of the American market is uh, an SUV market. That's a very clear message. And I think we have two products that are um, true, that are speaking to the heart of American consumers. In Europe, we are just at the beginning of a new Polo generation, and they reach all the order entry targets. T-Roc uh, started last weekend, and this will set the stage in particular for the year 2018. And I have to be honest, all of the new introduction that we have ahead of us in China uh, won't fit on the picture here. We'll have almost a complete range at the end of next year compared to this year. So for 2018, we will have lots of opportunities in our regional strategy, which we will know now go through together with our teams. Now at the very end, one or two images uh, which touches upon the big future projects in sales, which goes parallel to the electric platform. Um, parallel to that, we'll also change the distribution idea, the guiding idea, which we developed together with the dealerships and which now uh, have to be moved into the last round. The three cornerstones of our strategy, you see here, they're based on the strengthening of the entrepreneurship, the entrepreneurs who we have in our system. We want to remove two strict requirements. We want to give them more a more broader field to work with, the rather strict corset of standards and regulation. We want to loosen that a bit so that they can be more creative and bring their creativity to the brand. This is something what the dealerships and the entrepreneurs have demanded from us time and again. The second pillar is strengthening profitability and efficiency. Together with our dealer par dealership partners, we want to go for 10% uh, optimization, and optimization is the term that I'm using here, and this consists of reduced costs. We as manufacturers are uh, responsible for many indirect costs at the dealerships. We have to reduce them, but here this is mainly about creating productivity. How can we make uh, people in the dealerships more productive for customers so that they have to do less administration, which doesn't, prof which doesn't benefit uh, dealerships and customers, and so that they have more time for real customer content? So we want to do a lot together in the last year. We have developed all of these processes and projects together with the European Dealer Council. Uh, all of the uh, large markets are organized in this Dealer Council. And we're now looking forward to the implementation stage. The last cornerstone is customer focus, which is very clear to see that, that the guiding idea for distribution, that the customer is just being managed by one partner by dealership, is not pointing to the future. Customers expect from systems from someone like Volkswagen an end-to-end -end, um, service, and uh, this needs to be seen uh, more prevalent than ever before, which is why, as a last picture, I want to give you our uh, leading idea. On the left, you see the idea for distribution or dealership for the last 60 years. It basically hasn't changed. OEM delivers to the importer, importer delivers to dealerships, and dealerships have the customer customer contact. Now, this idea, we think, is not an idea that will move us to the future. We have to come up with a more collaborative general system with customers, and you see that on the right-hand side. So our power, our joint work and effort has to be arranged around the customer, um, which means uh, collaborative data management in order to service customers in a better way if they so wish, then we want to offer to them, of course, sovereign of the data is always customers, not us, that's self-evident, which is why we'll have three new cornerstones that will be the big cornerstones for us in the future. Can we add this? It is the customer ID, a clear 
access to the world of service and services of the Volkswagen brand. You know that from your smartphones, each and every one on the smartphone, you have a clear idea, idea of who you are and you have your services that you've released by this. And coming with it, we have a clear allocation of the vehicle or car idea, ID the car that you are in. And thirdly, we have the dealer ID, so allocation of the physical dealership partner that will look after you locally. Because for us, it's important, and this is my final statement, the dealer of the future will be a strategic partner of ours. We think dealers are a strategic asset of ours in the future. But we have to restructure our work together. And this is the process we're in at the moment. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.